This video is sponsored by PPA. Hey everyone, in today's video, we are going to be comparing three different prime telephoto focal lengths for portrait photography. So today I have a full frame camera. I have the Sony a7 III, and then I have three different lenses. I have the G Master 85mm 1.4. I have the G Master 100mm, which is an f-stop of 2.8 and has a t-stop of 5.6. And I have the G Master 135mm 1.8. So we're going to be using those three lenses today to do a bunch of comparisons. I'm going to show you guys some photos side by side so you can see the differences. So hopefully this video you'll find it helpful if you're having troubles deciding between these three lenses for portrait photography. And it will make your decision a little bit easier so you can get something that's right for you and your style of photography. So today's model is Amanda and Dan is behind the camera filming. Since I have the 85 millimeter on, we're gonna start with this. Could I get you standing just here? Yeah. So I'm gonna start with a full body shot for this one. Looking at these specific lenses, the first big difference I noticed between all three is the bokeh. The G Master 135 is so insane, I can't get over it. The bokeh here is the largest and smoothest. Then comes the 85, and finally the 100 millimeter has the smallest bokeh since it has an f-stop of 2.8. Okay, so now I'm on the 100 millimeter for the full body portraits. And I have to bump up my ISO for this one. Yeah, perfect. I'm at ISO 400 and one over 160. I'm noticing that this lens has a really cool lens flare right now, which you guys will see in the final photos. For the full body shots, I actually really love what the 100mm looks like. I like that there is more emphasis and detail in the background, and that little lens flare looks really nice in my opinion too. Of course, you can use a lens hood if you don't want the lens flares in your shots. This lens also has an APD filter in it by the way for that smoother bokeh look. I'm on the 135mm right now, and with this lens I have to be the furthest away from my subject, since it's the most telephoto of all. For the full body shots, I really like the 85 so far. By only looking at just the focal length though, I think we're gonna see a trend here, but my favorite framing and compression comes down to the 135. The 135 millimeter just has a way of making a location look so magical by really flattening it out and almost making it look like it's coming forward in the frame compared to the other two lenses. Before we move on to the next comparison, I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit more about today's sponsor, PPA. I recently signed up to the Professional Photographers of America, which is the largest association of professional photographers worldwide with over 30,000 members. As a PPA member, you will have access to $15,000 worth of equipment insurance and special rates on general liability, which is super important if you guys shoot on location like me. Their new education platform features over 900 hours hours of business and photography classes to help you grow as a photographer with topics such as having the right brand messaging, how to attract the right clients and more. You guys regularly ask me to share my photography contracts and this is the exact kind of information you can find as a member on PPA. You can find everything from proposals to model releases, copyright transfers and heaps more. Use this link or click on the link in my description to receive $25 off your PPA membership. And back to the video. So we're back on the 85 and now we're going to take a mid-length portrait and I want to take one in landscape and one in portrait ways as well. Maybe if you can get into that little crevice in the tree. Oh yeah, you can kind of like lean on it. You can shift around if you're not too comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to try, can you put your hand in your back pocket? It's nice. So now we are on the 100 millimeter for the mid-length portraits. And since this is a 5.6 lens, you can actually really see all the colors in the background of this shot, whereas you couldn't see them on the 85. I feel like your hair blowing in the wind actually looks really nice in some shots. <laughs> I like it. The 
the last lens for the mid-length test is going to be the 135. Which, oh my gosh, I have to keep going back. I love what this lens looks like. The bucket is insane in these shots. I would love to know what you guys think, but for me personally, both the landscape and portrait mid-length shots all look very similar to me. If I have to nitpick, the overall image of the 85mm is very minimally distorted compared to the 100 and 135. You can move your other hand around if you want. <laughs> I like that leaning on the tree branch. These are looking so good. Your movement's just like perfect. I love it. Like I said with the trend, I just love the look of the G Master 135 with that sharp focus but smooth finish. But in terms of focal lengths, I don't find any of Amanda's facial features change too much between all three. So we've switched out to the 85 again for the final time. The last comparison that I want to do is an extreme close-up portrait of Amanda. We're going to do, again, a landscape portrait and a portrait portrait. <laughs> Oh, okay. Maybe we'll go back behind the tree. So I feel like it wasn't that windy here. It looks so good. So now we are on the 100 millimeter. That's perfect. So last but not least, I'm on the 135 millimeter for the close-up portraits. Once you get to the extreme close-up shots, the 100 millimeter 2.8 doesn't stand out as much in terms of lack of bucket. Once you get closer to your subject, the background melts away and all three shots look quite similar. With the landscape close-ups, I find that the 85mm for me personally looks the most flattering. The biggest difference for me is comfort when shooting. Taking movement shots on an 85mm is definitely doable. On the 100 and 135, you need a lot of space to be able to move around and it is a bit of a challenge with such a long focal length. The other thing for me is how close you are to your subject. For a portrait photo shoot, I personally like to be a little closer to my subject so I can talk to them and give direction. On a 100 or 135, I feel like I'm at a yelling distance, which doesn't feel as relaxing during a shoot. On the other hand, if I'm at a wedding, having that extra distance can be nice to give your couples who may not be used to being in front of a camera a little bit of breathing room by distancing yourself from them to help them feel more comfortable. In the portrait orientation close-ups, it's interesting because I think the opposite. I actually think the 100 and 135 millimeter look the most flattering instead. So that is it for today's video and the comparisons that we're doing with these three telephoto prime lenses. I would love to know which ones were your favorite photos and lenses down in the comments below. And if you guys have a lens that you normally use for portraits, for me, I would say the 85 millimeter is probably as telephoto as I would go doing a portrait photo shoot. The 100 and the 135 are so, so beautiful, but I feel like I need a lot of space and I'm really far away from my model when I'm shooting on those lenses. So I I kind of stick to the 85 and I use the 135 a lot more when I'm shooting weddings. But yeah, I would love to know what you guys think as well. And if you enjoyed this video, I have lots of other videos, a whole series actually where I compare, where I compare 
prime focal lengths to each other. So 35 versus 50, 50 versus 85. And I'll leave them linked all down below if you guys want to watch. But thank you guys so much for watching. I make new videos every single week. So I will see you all next time. Bye.